The Blood Knot. Hello everybody, welcome back. And oh no, Johnny's not going to do a whole video on how to do a count of nine tails. What we're basically going to do today is we're going to have a look at the blood knot which is on the end of my tails and on this particular tail there's one, one blood knot there, another blood knot there and a third one. Um, now According to Ashley's book of knots, these are used in cat of nine tails. However, he does describe in his book in a little earlier chapter that he's never actually seen them on old um, cat of nine tails. And he's, he had a couple in his collection. He said they didn't actually have blood knots on the end of it. I think, to be honest, blood knots have come about simply to make the cat of nine tails here a bit more of a gruesome fairy tale tale weapon as such um, and to be honest I wouldn't have thought that they would put knots in it because to be honest if I was flogging someone I would want him up and about working fairly swiftly afterwards as well so if you're going to cripple someone on board a ship he becomes a liability I've also heard it said that um, in some cases they used to tie fish hooks into the um, cat and nine tails as well but I doubt that's very much true as well for the same reasons um, the other thing as well is that in of all the videos that I've done all the videos I've done will cover every single aspect that you can see here in the cat of nine tails so it's not too difficult to find the relevant videos to do your own um, cat of nine tails but anyway let's get that out of the way because what we're going to do today is we're going to concentrate on just the blood knot itself and it's to be honest it's very simple very easy it's just basically a double overhand knot that's all it is so there you go and you can see it comes out quite symmetrical when you tie it into your cordage and to so to tie this knot there is my working end and to the left there is my standing end and I'll show you the triple version in a minute but this is the double version and all it is is two overhand knots it's a double overhand knot so the first thing I'm going to do is form a loop around there and you can see now that my cordage is going around and then over the top at this point here and when when it goes over the top all I do is take my working end and bring it up through the middle and you can see now here if I were to pull that up I would do a simple overhand knot but because we're going to do the double overhand knot all I do is take it around the outside again and then up through the middle so take it over the top round the back up through the middle and then you can see there now we've gone round the cordage twice and all I do now is just gently pull it up and tease it into position you have to be careful with it you don't want to pull it madly and wildly and then gently tease it into position and then you can see that as we tease it and pull it up tight we then end up with a nice symmetrical knot starting to appear in our cordage there and all we do is just keep pulling it up tight and it's got to be really nice and tight obviously if you're going to flog someone you want it as tight as possible but the whole idea is pull it up nice and tight so it doesn't come undone and then it looks good in um, natural cordage when you've got the lay of the rope as well it's just a lovely little knot to have in there and just puts a nice added decorative feature into your work so anyway that is the single version and so the next thing I'm going to show you how to tie is sorry that's the double version whoa that's a double overhand knot and here we go here's the triple and it can be quadrupled possibly even more I've never seen how many I can get in there but you probably wouldn't want more than a triple or a quadruple so anyway what I'll do now is I will quickly show you how I tied this one Right, so this time what we're going to do is we're going to do three turns around it. Instead of double loop or the double overhand loop, we're going to do a triple one. And it's exactly the same. So to the right is my working end. So pull a little bit through because we want a fair bit of cordage for this. And then the next thing I do is exactly the same as the previous method. I form a loop like, like this there. 
like this there. And then the next thing I do is I take my working end and I pass it down up through that loop once, go round, pass it up through that loop twice, so that would be the double, and then take it around, up through for a third time, and then just gently pull it up. Now the thing you'll notice is that when you do the triple, you'll notice that as you pull it up, you get this crossing here. But what we want to do is just gently coax it around so that we get rid of that by fiddling around with it. We then get one, that's it, just move it, move those down a bit. And you can see now here, just by sliding it down a little bit and fiddling with it, we've now got ourselves three turns around. So we've now got a blood knot, which is three overhand knots as such. So instead of the double, we've now got the triple and just gently work your way around. But like any knot that you're doing, gently work your way around it and tighten it up nice and evenly until we have our blood knot. Looks good. It's got to look good. If it doesn't look good, it wasn't worth it. And to be honest, when you're doing it in a cat of nine tails or something like that, it has to look good because everybody... Put it this way, if you make a cat of nine tails, you put it on show, everybody will be picking it up, looking at it and going, oh wow, they love them. They love cat of nine tails. A bit, people love weapons, don't they? So anyway, once again, thanks very much for watching. I've got crud on my table here. And if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. Please do share by sharing it. You, you allow me to make others and I'll see you again shortly. Take care then. Bye bye.